Okay, now we're going to look at the second time around. This is chapter 11, and the second time around really just means remarriage and step families. Alrighty. When we think about this, remarriage, well, that's a marriage that takes place after a previous marriage has already ended, and the current divorce race is increasing, as are remarriages. And today, remarriage follows following divorce is the most frequent, is more frequent than death of a spouse. So the divorce race is up, the remarriage is up, and it's far more popular, if you will, <laughs> than the death of a spouse. Now, a step family is a family where the children are related to one parent, but not necessarily the other. In 2011, step families represent one in eight couples with stepchildren. A simple step family is all children related to one parent, not the other. A complex or blended family will have variations of the step family form, where maybe both people bring in children of a previous marriage, or one does and they have their own children together, or one the other does and they have their own children together. There's many forms of what is now considered a step family. So when you look at this, until end of World War II, most remarriages followed death of a spouse, now likelier to follow divorce. Complex factors underlie shift from remarriage after a widowhood to remarriage after divorce. Increased life expectancy, changes in the divorce law in 1968 and in 1985, improved pensions, greater acceptance of common law unions, and the single uh, and single living. And so what you're seeing there is that the percentage of the parents in step families age 20 to 64 by type of step family. And you're seeing from the year, you're seeing that parents in complex step families, this is where there's children from either both families or from one or the other family plus having children of their own is increasing over the years. And parents in a simple step family, that is one parent bringing in children and those are the only children you see that starting to decrease more this slide here you're looking at is um, uh, fewer people who are divorced and tend to remarry more than six in ten divorced Canadians all right however people may form common law relationships without remarrying in 2006 and um, what you're seeing then is 26% uh, of women and 37% of men entered into a conjugal relationship, married or common law, within three years of a divorce. Within 20 years, 69% of women and 82% of men had formed a new unions. And that's what you're seeing here in terms of the um, representation in Canada in 2001. And so you take a little time and you might just sort of view over that. You can take a closer look in your textbook, but you get an idea of these trends in remarriage is significantly, significantly growing. So when forming a new family, there are stages of remarriage and success of a remarriage has a lot to do with how well you manage to go through these stages. Uh, one of the main differences between first marriages and second or later ones involves family boundaries. There are three distinct, sorry, let me, uh, three distinct stages in entering and adapting to the second marriage. And one is entering the new relationship. Um, one of the key successes towards a second marriage is being able to manage this first step, is you don't move into a second marriage without having a complete physical and emotional divorce from the first one. Now, when I say that, I mean is oftentimes we haven't resolved all of our issues, both within ourselves and with that other, our former partner, before we enter into a new relationship. And sometimes not having done that is what causes the second relationship to fail. So a physical and emotional divorce is complete first as anger is a significant link to one's ex and commitment to a new relationship needs to be free of the past. And so the second step is planning the new marriage and family. And one of the things that's really important and both partners, if they've been married before, or even if one has been married before, is this awareness that open and honest communication is essential and something that most people who have had a first marriage going into a second marriage uh, do understand. 
you need to express your likes and your dislikes, um, your new in-laws, relationship with your exes, uh, instant family, not so much, children's relationship with the other family, need to think about and plan how and how this is all going to happen as best you can. And then lastly is forming the, the remarriage family where renegotiating new boundaries and roles. You know, who does what? Oftentimes in a remarriage, there's oftentimes more roles than there are more people than there are roles. Mom and dad. Well, now we have two dads and two moms maybe in some cases. And so learning how you know who who is doing what and under what circumstances and what are the boundaries what can and cannot you you cannot do new and existing rituals routines and traditions and you know the way that you used to in your first marriage celebrate christmas might not be the way you will in your second marriage and part of this is re-establishing and sort of forming a new remarriage family now i've mentioned boundaries a few times we'll go back over this some defines who belongs into belongs to the family it creates unity and we establish boundaries kind of through our routines and rituals this can include you know the way we eat dinner and ways maybe we greet one another or the way we talk to one another the social activities we do together and these are the patterns that bond us remarriage promotes boundary ambiguity not knowing for sure who does what under what circumstances custody and visitation children's loyalties Finances. Often in remarriages, um, finances are separate and it can be a source of stress. Authority over children. Household rules. Um, this is all something that causes additional problems where boundaries become important to establish. You can't mimic the first marriage family. They need to encourage more open boundaries. There are things that are called permeable boundaries. And this is where children feel that they are able to move from one family to the other with the least amount of strain. Now I've mentioned this as well, and that is about roles. Uh, usually um, one of the main difficulties in remarriage family is that there are too many candidates for the available roles. If you're the new wife with your husband's new husband's kids, then you become the stepmother there's already a mother. Stepmother does what? And so this sort of figuring out roles, and it goes the other way around, that if you're the, um, the new husband and you're not bringing kids and your new wife has kids, well, those kids have a father, and then what role do you play? And so this element about role becomes very difficult at times. Trad traditional gender roles work against step families. A difficulty facing some children in step families is a loss of the accustom, uh, of these accustomed roles. You know, the youngest becomes, or the oldest or the youngest child loses their position because of these additional children from step families, perhaps. The couple relationship, um, as in many other marriages, partners in remarriages have the task of commitment because a strong couple bond is the foundation of a new family. Couples in a second marriage are less romantic, more realistic, and honest about difficulties in marriage. Uh, fact, um, fact that the parent-child uh, parent bond be, um, began before the marriage, not following it, can create difficulties in the relationship between the new spouses. Ex-spouse can also affect a new marriage. So we'll be looking in as well at what we would consider to call the residential child-parent relationship. Parent-child relationships often suffer in the, in the early post-divorce period. Some children face parents restructuring after a breakup by becoming the parentified child. You'll find that in your textbook. When parents remarry, children must give up some of the responsibility and closeness to their new adult and the family to the new adult in the family adjustment to loss of a spouse often affects the remaining spouse's energy and emotional resources a, a greater tendency for the closing of ranks increasing dependency on one another and sometimes that can itself be a problem when we're looking at the um, the non-residential parent-child relationship, this is the relationship between the child and the non-residential parent. It varies greatly from family to family. Non-residential mothers much less likely to stop visiting children. They're more likely to keep up regular frequent visits. If either parent remarries, 
visits with non-residential parent tend to drop off. Children's contact with non-residential parents involves social and fun activities usually. The residential parent is involved with the day-to-day -day activities such as helping with the homework and maintaining discipline. Contact between the children and the non-residential parent is still valuable. Now when we look at the step parent and step child relationship, the relationship between step parent and step child is important for two reasons. First, many marriages flounder because problems in this relationship between new parent and child. And second, the adolescents in step families are at higher risk of developing behavioral problems. Successful step parents accomplish two tasks. One, they, dis they establish the development of an appropriately affectionate relationship with the child and two, establish themselves as legitimate parental authorities. The step-child relationship depends somewhat on the child's age and sex. Step-parents tend to be more successful with younger children who become more attached more readily, uh, more report positive relationships with boys rather than girls. And the degree of discipline in a step-family members is often affected by loyalty issues. Uh, discipline is another potential area for conflict, differences in child rearing styles, and that becomes a very big issue for many remarried couples. Then there's the relationship between the stepbrothers and stepsisters. Many step siblings don't live together since most common patterns in child is for children to live with their mothers. Uh, children expect their birth parents to consider them special and side with them in conflicts, and this can be a problem. If one sets up children's visits or moves into a family home permanently, problems may arise over a turf war. <laughs> Many adol uh, when adolescents of both sexes are in the family, conflict may, ad may be adopted as a way of maintaining a safe distance between them. Uh, Step-siblings can provide one another with some very important emotional support. And then outside of these relationships already touched on is the child born into a step family. About half of step families have a child born uh, to them. Most common with the younger mothers, having a baby is related to step family stability. Mutual child may symbolize family peace and harmony because the birth demonstrates love and commitment of the couple. Stepchildren fare, fare much um, like children raised in a single mother. They have um, more educational and emotional and behavioral difficulties than children growing up in, orig in a, an original nuclear family. Uh, needs to separate statistics from the individual. That just means that statistically is one thing, but individual experience is based on the individual family's approach to their family. And remarriage and, and part of the life cycle. Now what you're seeing is a number of images of different people in different life cycles, uh, where they are in their ages. Experience of remarriage differs according to life sta cycle stage of each partner. The greatest strain involves responsibilities to their children, especially difficult when they have adolescence. Greater the difference in this life cycle, cycle age, that just means that you have a younger person married to a young, an older person, they're at different stages of life. This is more difficult to adapt for the new family because husband and wives are dealing with different life cycle issues. And then lastly, family uh, adaptation. This is a useful way of looking at how remarriage um, families adapt by considering the stressors they face, resources they use, and the meaning they place on their experiences. Stressors include boundaries and role ambiguity, unresolved emotional issues from earlier relationships, and adjusting to different family cultures. Successful step families have realistic expectations and ability to cooperate with one another. Flexibility, respect, communication, sense of humor are characteristic of how family members view remarriage effects on their adaptation as well. Many regard new union as a second chance or an intrusion into their parent-child relationship. Others consider it a flexible family form that can be shaped to meet members' needs. Thank you very much and I hope this has been helpful and uh, we are almost there. Thanks a lot. Bye now.